So I'm going to ask you some questions. Yeah, yeah. And these questions are, are, are straight off the ground. Mm -hmm. and this is what people are thinking mm -hmm. on, on, on the ground. So we want to make sure that we get a good impression yeah, no, of, of course. and give a good account. Um, the first one is, um, and that is, what is your overall impression of the documentary? Um, I thought it was quite inflammatory. Um, mm. I was quite disappointed. I don't think the title alone, I don't think it really speaks to our issues. Okay. Um, I think also it kind of gave an unbalanced mm -hmm. look at some of the, the, the negative circumstances that we find ourselves in as a community. Um, and I question whether or not it has any kind of positive outcome. Sure. And when you use the word gangs, there's, there's nothing positive that comes exactly. out of that label. So um, I think it's important that some of these, the, the ways in which we present ourselves in the media mm -hmm. needs to be spoken about. And I think it's important that we have control yeah. over our imagery. Talks about gang lands, yeah. um, turf, gang land, turf wars. Um, and if it was informative and they were talking about what they thought to be, quote unquote, to be gangs, why wasn't other ethnic um, groups, groups yeah. involved? Yeah. I'm saying yeah, like totally. Polish, Kurdish, yeah. Italians, exactly. Chinese. Exactly. I'm saying it was just about, you know, it was just focused on young black boys. Mm. I couldn't understand. Mr. Blake and Maroon Productions have yeah. put this together. Yeah. If, if you had an audience with him right now, mm. what would be the thing that you would want him to know? I about mean, this production. Funnily enough, um, I actually contributed okay. to the documentary, the second part, which is around the murder of a boy called Shaquan Fearon. Yeah. Um, and his mother gave an interview, I gave an interview. So I do have concerns about the way they would have dealt with that situation. Obviously, she was a grieving mother. Yeah. Um, she let the cameras into her life, so I'm quite concerned about how that is going to be perceived by the media. Do, 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 do you think that that was a little manipulation? because of her vulnerability at the time? Um, I mean, at the time, she wanted a platform. Right. Um, what I do question, though, is whether or not Gangland is the right platform for a grieving mother to kind sure. of air her grievances about the CPS, the criminal justice system. So um, I reserve partial judgment until I've seen that, that part of the documentary, but the first part was completely him. Okay. How can we deal? What would, how can we deal with the impact, the negativity? Well, the fact of the matter is, let's just talk about the real impact of what could happen potentially sure. because of this documentary. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to um, people in the community. So when we, when we talk about gangs, I think there's something, I don't like the word gangs. Sure. However, when I um, try and understand the soft, the soft factors around it, gang for many people means family, means community, yeah, yeah, yeah. means loyalty. Yeah. And I think that one of the impacts from this could be that there are going to be fallouts and people are going to be angry because you baited up people's exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, and what's going to happen about that? Are we talking about deaths and murders to breed more murders and breed deaths? Because mm. then we're just falling in, into mm. the same trap. Mm. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. As we look at, at, at movies or, or documentaries like Gangland, mm. um, it's hard to see how <laughs> it will address the core problem. Yeah, no, and, and initially, when I spoke to the producers, the, the goal was to dispel some of the negative stereotypes. Mm. Um, I was told that the goal was to kind of get to the consequences, not to say the consequences, but some of the reasons or some of the specific yeah. disadvantages that communities up and down the country are facing, rather than the kind of surface um, stereotypical myths that we kind of saw on that documentary, that first part. Sure, sure. It's the sensationalism and the glorification of, of seeing these young people, so one of them saying they were making 2200 a day. Uh, a lot of young people on the street in jail look at that and say, well, look, if you can make it, I can make it. You know what I'm sure. saying? It's that negative impact. And to be honest, when you give young people that are disadvantaged to involve in criminality cameras, what do you expect them to film? Sure. I mean, there was no, um, there was no questions, there was no interview. They were just literally given the camera and, and, and given free reign. Mm -hmm. And I think it's irresponsible if you don't present what they've said in terms of their voice responsibly. And I think that's what we saw. I don't think there's been a huge amount of duty of care. Um, I mean, a lot of the young people supposedly were masked up, um, anonymous, but whether or not that's true or not, we don't know. Yeah. Um, so I think definitely we need to kind of think about how we, we engage yeah. with these um, production companies. Um, it's been a lesson for myself. Yeah. Um, but also I think it's important, not so much for Middle England, but I think how does that documentary 
how is it perceived by us as a community? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got parents that are watching this. How does that affect their parenting? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think these are the issues that maybe not yeah. weren't necessarily thought about before the mm. documentary was put together. What young people are doing in today's society in order to survive because of the lack of opportunity and because of poverty that is so deeply embedded amongst black people but working class people and it really showed um, the hardship that people go through and what it pushes people to do to have to get food in their mouth or mm. somewhere to sleep. And, and, and you know, um, we talked about street violence and community violence and, and, and until we get to the core and we set foundations in place, I think we're probably banging ahead against yeah. a brick wall. We can put out anything we want to put out, yeah. but those, there are people really dealing uh, hurting on the grassroots level. I also think it's important that we have control over the media, or, or of our own representation. Beautiful. Um, I think far too often as production companies that um, need to keep running, they've got bills to pay, that they tend to take these commissions mm. and pander to some of the, the negative stereotypes sure. just to get the commission. Nice. I think it's important we've got other um, black orientated productions, we've got Freddy Krueger, we've got Kush Films, all black owned, black minded yeah. Um, yeah. institutions, but companies that um, are sort of trying to help rather than trying to pander to the, the, the white mainstream media. Sure. What is your overall impression of the documentary? Well, I watched it and um, I couldn't believe what I was watching first. Like, it took me a little while to process it after what I just watched. And then it wasn't until the morning I realised that it, it was a disgrace for me personally. Sure. Um, I, the things that I saw, I just couldn't work out what the point of it was. It was, um, it just come across as a lot of darkness, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And targeted at young black yes. boys. Yes. Um, which had broader implications for, you know, for me as a black man. 